Hi, this is Julianne with Life Edit and Design, and welcome back. We are on section three or lesson three of the how to choose a planner and actually stick with it. <laughs> so we talked about the why and the what. What are you putting in your planner? Why are you planning? And that helped us with the when and the where. So that was our second step was where's, when are you gonna be using this planner? Where are you gonna be using it? Because that will help you decide what you're going to actually purchase and use as your planner. So yay, we're on to actual step three, we're picking our planner, which is where most people are on step one, right? So you've done a little bit of homework, which is great, feel good about it. Now we're on to step three, which is going to be, all right, what planner am I going to use? So the when and the where is helping you decide the format and the portability of your planner. And we'll also get into a little bit more of the hybrid. And I really want to focus on the fact that you can change your mind. You can try these things out and they don't work for you. You try something else. So if we're thinking about what we're putting into our planner, um, you know, if you're doing appointments and you're doing to do's and you're, you're going to be traveling all over, you might be saying, okay, I need something small. And like my mom who's retired has just one of those little, I don't even have something that's that small, but it's those little tiny ones you get in the mail. She gets it from, um, like a Catholic communities or something like that. And it's this little wallet size planner and she puts all her appointments in there. That's the only thing she tracks. She doesn't track to do's, nothing else. She uses this little planner. She makes appointments, you know, girlfriend dates go in there, doctor's appointments go in there. And then she takes that and she transfers that to the wall calendar that hangs in the kitchen. And that is her entire planning system. And that works for her. It's portable when she needs it. So she keeps things right. You know, she goes and makes a doctor's appointment. She writes it in there right away. And then in the, at the beginning of a new month, she goes through her plan, you know, her portable planner and she writes everything on the big calendar so she can see it. And that system works for her. And it's developed over time. And that's it perfectly, it's like it's all she needs. So that going back to the what and the why, if that's all you need is to track appointments, you don't need something big. You might just want a plain old monthly calendar that sits, you know, even one of those uh, old fashioned desk blotter style. They're, they're coming back. <laughs> Who knew? But one of those big ones that you put on your desk, it works as a blotter and you write all your appointments on that. It's what works for you. So I want you to give yourself grace and be able to choose and change and really figure it out. You're going to need to experiment. You're going to need to be flexible. And so we're going to be going through a little bit of my planner graveyard today <laughs> because I have tried a lot of different things and you know you have to find what works for you. So I want you to be able to um, ex you know, change, do things differently, um, but you need to kind of go into with a couple ideas. First of all, what, what layouts do you like? Do you want to see things daily or do you want to see things weekly and do you need monthly as well like how do they all fit together so a daily planner is one like um, I was showing you before um, we'll jump into this real quick um, my daily this is a daily planner so this is my digital planner that we had talked about before and it's just one day so you can see it says Wednesday at the top and it's just one day and that's you just focus on the one day and there are paper planners that do that that just focus on the daily layout and then they have a monthly thing to help you stay focused on the whole month as a whole but um, they're based on a daily planner and I know um, I Heart planners they come out with one every year and <laughs> she actually ships it to you in a box because there's that many pages and you only keep so many pages into your your disk bound system at a time because that's the one downside of daily planning is they're big and bulky. So if you don't have a disc or a ring bound system, you're stuck with carrying all of that around. So that can be very heavy. And that's why you don't see a lot of these in the stores. You might find them more in a, maybe a Staples, but you're gonna probably be on more on like an Etsy shop or um, a digital planner that allows you to do daily, but keep it light. Or you're gonna have to you know, go maybe iHeart planners if you really like their style. She does the whole daily planner thing. So they are big and bulky and they allow you to focus just on one day. So make sure that if that's the way you like to plan, make sure that you've kind of come up with a system where you're not carrying around a lot of weight. If you're stationary, then maybe that's fine for you. So you can go with a daily planner because it's only gonna live on your desk and it's not gonna go from you to work, to home, to kids practices, that kind of thing. And if you, again, think hybrid, if you like to focus on your day one day at a time, but you have something more lightweight and more portable to take around so you can capture things as they come up and then transfer them back to your daily planner later. That might be the hybrid system that works for you. And I was doing the daily planning for most of the fall and then towards the end of the fall, I'm like, you know, I really need to start seeing my week all at once. And that was this daily planner didn't give me a chance to see the whole week. So you have, you have to think about yourself saying, you know, do my to-dos, sometimes not all get done and they need to shift to the next day. Do I um, wanna see all my appointments? Like when I'm picking my to-dos, 
I like to see the whole week so I can say, all right, this day I have a lot of time to work on things, and this day I'm going to be running around, so let me give myself a lighter schedule of to-dos. And this day I'm going to be in this area, so it's a good day to get gas and you know get groceries or something because I'm going to be near some of those places. So I wanted to start to see the whole week, and I just didn't have time to design it. So that's why I switched to my weekly planner, which allows me to see the entire week. So I have my schedule up here, and my to-dos are down here. To-dos are down here. So I have AM and PM, then my to-dos, and then I just have a spot for notes. And I find that that's really helped me, and I'll be designing that digitally for the winter. Um, once I get some time, I'll be designing that so I can use it on my iPad, because I do like to have my iPad, because I can switch from planner to planner. But I like having paper, too. It's a nice to mix things up, so you do not have to be all, all in on one format. You can change your format. But you really need to think about, Am I a weekly person if I'm tracking to-dos, or am I a daily person? If you're journaling, you're going to want you know, kind of horizontal blocks. I don't have any here with me right now, but I do have some that I have used where it's just a big horizontal paragraph kind of lined area that you can do some of your short journals on. So that if you're doing a daily journal on something, like say you're doing mood journaling and you want to talk about your day, your mood, the weather, and how they all kind of play together, then you want to look for a planner that has the weekly view, but horizontal uh, layouts, as opposed to a vertical layout. So with the Happy Planner, which a lot of people really like, this is a, a Happy Planner, um, they tend to do more of this, and this is an older one, but they tend to do the three box layout. Let's see if we can get that. So it's a three box layout, so one, two, three. And a lot of times it's vertical. They definitely have horizontal layouts as well. But with the vertical layout, um, you're kind of looking at your day you're either doing like three boxes, so you're doing morning, um, afternoon, and evening, or you're looking at your, you know, appointments, menu, to-dos. Like, so you're kind of taking things and chopping them into three sections. So if that's why, if you have like three main things that you want to do, you might like the Happy Planner because it's kind of in three chunks. So you, and just because you're using Happy Planner does not mean you need to use stickers. <laughs> you don't have to be a pretty planner to use a Happy Planner. They, you know, if you want to use stickers, great, but you don't have to. You don't have to be Instagram worthy. It has to work for you. If your style is functional and not beautiful, there's nothing wrong with that. You'd still use a happy planner. And you can go to Barnes and Nobles. They have tons and tons of planners to choose from. So you're making a decision between daily and weekly. And then you're making a decision about portability. So here is a mini planner. This is lightweight, very portable, but on the pages, there is not a whole lot of room to write. So it has this weekly layout. As you can see, there is not a whole lot of room for you to put your entries on. So you can track some appointments and to-do to do's, but you really can't write a sentence. You know, it, it's really small. But that might be all that you need. So if you're going to be very portable, you might want something lightweight that you can carry around. This is a lot lighter. Um, what I like about the iPad is that the iPad um, is heavy. But I can have as many planners, as many different layouts and formats and change things around and only have to carry this one thing. So I do, I really do prefer to use my iPad as my planner, but it's really up to you. If you're mostly doing stationary planning, you can go with the big mumbo jumbo. This is like the eight and a half and 11. This is the big um, happy planner size. And you could go with something that big if it's mostly stationary. I don't know if I'd want to be carrying this around and throwing this in my bag because it's pretty heavy and have to go back and forth. But when I bought this, it was to be a stationary planner. It was to live on my desk and stay there. So you're thinking about weight. You're thinking about layout. So how portable does it need to be? What is your tolerance for how heavy it's going to be? And is the layout going to be weekly or daily? And is it going to be vertical or horizontal? That's not too, too bad, right? You can kind of figure that out. And then there's the bullet journal style. I told you I've gone through a lot of journals. Um, and the bullet journal style allows you to do whatever you want, right? It's a dot grid format. So you can make it pretty, you can make it not so pretty. So there's a whole um, book and there's tons of videos on the, the bullet journal style. And so a lot of people prefer this. This is a very unpretty version, just to show you. And what it is, is just a blank page and you get to plan it any way you want to plan it. And I've tried, you know, as I tried different styles just to see what um, appealed to me. And that's how you're going to learn. If you don't try things, you're not going to learn. So don't be afraid to reach out and try some different things. And what I thought would be fun is to go through the Enneagrams. Um, I hope I'm saying that right. And 
go like, okay, based on your Enneagram style, this is the type of planner you would use. So let's have a little bit of fun. This is meant to be lighthearted, but may give you a little bit of guidance. So if you're a one, you're a perfectionist, you know, you really like to follow the rules. So when you're picking your planner, if your planner is one of those ones that has a lot of different things going on, you know you're gonna fill out every single one. So be careful what you buy because if it has a lot of boxes, you are going to want to fill them all. And one of the things you will wanna look for though as a, a, a one type or a perfectionist is check boxes. Like I, I have a lot of perfectionists in me and I love checking boxes. <laughs> they, they actually have proved that you get a dopamine hit from checking a box. Some people, not everybody, but I'm definitely one of those people. I check a box, I love it. So if you're that kind of um, plan, if you're a one, if you're a perfectionist, you're gonna want a planner with some structure, but just know that you are just bound and committed to fill. If there's a meal box and a mood box and, and a weather box, you're just gonna feel like you need to fill them all in. So be careful how many different things are on your page. If you're number two, you're a giver. And this, I, we're doing stereotypes and this is just meant to be fun, but you're probably gonna have a lot of appointments. You're probably gonna have a lot, because the giver is somebody who's always helping people. So your, their planner is probably gonna need to be portable and you're probably gonna be pulled in six different directions because you're always helping people with something. And so you're gonna need a planner. I would suggest a weekly, you know, Cookie's back to playing. I would suggest a weekly planner that allows you to really to track your appointments and your to-dos because that is kind of how you think. You think, how can I help others? And the other thing that I would recommend if you are a giver is some kind of self-care journal, something that lives separate, get it away from your planner, but something that says you take care of yourself because you're so busy giving to others that you really should have some kind of self-care journal, tracker, or something like that for yourself because you're, you tend to neglect yourself in lieu of taking care of others. So again, this is just all meant to be fun. If you're three and you're an achiever, like my son, you are going to want one of those planners that are probably created by you know, a heavily branded success style planner, like Darren Hardy, somebody like that that's very into success and you're gonna want to be a leather bound, very beautiful printer or a very beautiful planner. That's just gonna be what appeals to you. You're probably not gonna want the happy planner because that's just, you're the achiever. So you, you just want this beautiful kind of executive looking planner. So. Again, if you're female, male, you may have some different desires, but you're really gonna want the success planner. You're really looking for those branded planners that um, are more goal-driven. That's, that's gonna be you. You're not gonna be so concerned about your appointments as you are your goals and getting somewhere and being more productive, more efficient. So look for those kind of planners. Might not find those as much at the Barnes and Nobles and the Michaels, where you might wanna be looking as online at some of those, again, the branded, the Darren Hardy type of planners, success planner, uh, 12 hour planner. Some of those might be some of the brands that you're looking for. Again, this is just meant to be fun. Um, if you're for the individualist, <laughs> you're all about self-expression, get yourself a bullet journal because it, you're just gonna wanna create your page any which way you want it. And you, know, you might be just happy starting with that blank page and be like, oh, let's have fun. Or you might be one who's really into the artistic expression. And so you may really wanna do stickers because you want to start with a very bare bones page and really fill it up with your style. So you're the individualist, you're not as concerned about appointments and such, you're concerned about beauty and really just express self-expression. So you're, you're gonna be a little bit more on the artistic side or the bullet journal side. If you're the investigator, which is a type five, that's me, I love to learn. Um, you're gonna want more of the big picture. So that's probably why the daily planner didn't work for me. You kind of need to see the big picture and how the pieces fit. I mean, that's, you're just, you're just curious by nature and you kind of want to get things to work. And so the week views are kind of important to me. And as I said, I couldn't just have my appointments. I needed my appointments and to-dos. I needed that big picture. I need to be able to see it all. I need my monthly view and I need to be able to slice and dice my monthly view too. So that's why I like Google Calendar because I can turn different views on and off. And then I like to be able to have my big picture week view. So that's if you're the uh, investigator number five. If you're six, the skeptic, you like to be prepared. So that's, that's your thing. So you might like the compartmentalized, um, kind of like the happy planner with the, the three boxes because you might want, you want to be prepared for everything. So you might want your home, your business, um, and maybe yourself kind of compartmentalized so you can prepare for things in each little section and you can focus on each little section. So your to-dos 
um, related to work might sit in this top box and your appointments might sit there. And then you, in the second box you might be doing more things that you're working on for um, maybe a side business or your blog or something like that. So you kind of like compartments. That's, you know, the skeptic just wants to be, likes to be safe and prepared. So be thinking about the planner that really helps you feel that way. If you're the enthusiast, number seven, you're, you like fun and adventure probably not a planner <laughs> so for my my seven friends out there you are easily bored you don't want to plan so you might be best off with one of those very simple planners that just has a monthly view and you know it's 24 pages because you're just you're not you know you might be thinking oh everybody walks around the planner and look how organized they are that just might not fit your personality type and you might be better with the desk blotter type or the monthly view and you're just writing down the important things but you are more about out there and doing things and not so much about planning you might want to be able to put hey going on a hike this day and you might want to track that but that's all you need to track you're not going to track your packing list and your meal shopping list and everything that you need to get ready to go on that hike that's just not your style. So the simpler the planner for you, the better because you just, you're easily bored. You're, you, you're a doer and you're not a planner and that's okay, there's nothing wrong with that. So if you score a seven on the uh, Enneagram, that's where you wanna look. If you're a challenger, <laughs> these people don't like rules. So again, you might be a bullet journal type and you're like, I'm gonna plan my page my way and I'm not going by any, what anybody else has to say. So you might be a bullet journal, but you're definitely not gonna be the one with all the pages all mapped out, cause that's just not you. You're like, that doesn't fit me. I don't do this or I don't do that. You don't want any extra stuff. You wanna be in control of your schedule. So you might want appointments and to-dos, but you're probably gonna to wanna to design the page your way. So you either might want a custom planner or a bullet journal or something that just gives you some general frames and you get to fill in what goes in each frame. So. The challenger is looking for more of an open, more flexible system. Um, you might be more digital based where you can drag things around a little bit more, but that, that's you. You're not gonna want something that's very structured in your planner. And if you're a peacemaker, and that's our number nine, you're probably, you know, you spend a lot of time probably in appointments and they're probably not appointments you create. You're probably not leading the meetings, but you're attending a lot of meetings and you're mediating a lot of things and you're probably maybe doing some um, family get togethers just to try to keep people in connection with each other. So appointments are gonna be big for you and to-dos are gonna be big for you. Um, again, you're, you're a little bit like the giver. You're gonna to need to make sure that you're doing some self-care because you tend to focus on others. And so you're gonna to want to do things that are just a little bit more, um, you're gonna to need to work on yourself a little bit more because you're so busy outwardly focused, helping other people. And you're probably gonna want something more soothing and more on the pretty side. So you may not be as functional as somebody else. You might really um, want the aesthetic beauty. It doesn't mean that you're naturally, you're gonna be gravitating towards doing the artistic expression of putting stickers on, but you might want a planner that's just pretty by the way it's printed. So you know, this planner that I'm using here is not one you use stickers on, it's just printed in pretty colors, and I use pretty colors. So that might be more your style as the peacemaker, even as the giver, is that you want something that's pretty, but you're not necessarily going to be doing the artistic expression of putting stickers on it. Just some colored pens, highlighters, and that's enough, and you're, you're pretty happy with that. So I just thought that'd be fun to go through the Enneagram types and what kind of planner you want to pick. And as you can see, there, there are so many planners out there. There's no right or wrong. You get to pick what works for you, which I love about planning is it's individual style. If you buy a page that has a lot of structure, you're gonna be living with that structure, so make sure that your personality type likes structure. And if you like the open, loose thing, make sure your personality matches that open, loose, flowing, you can design it your way kind of planner. Make sure that artistic vibe is in there for you. So that should help you as you go into shop. So you're thinking about the daily view versus the weekly view versus the monthly view horizontal versus vertical, which one appeals to you, structure versus non-structure, and then the weight, <laughs> the all important weight. You know, if it's going to be very portable and with you everywhere, how small can you go, how light can you go, and still be functional, um, how sturdy, you know, these have very sturdy covers, the Happy Planner has these nice um, laminated covers, how sturdy does it have to be, how pretty does it have to be, you know, versus, you know, the Staples kind, where you, when you go to Staples or an office supply store, those are very black and white, very functional, not so much pretty, but they're sturdy and they're, they're lightweight. So these are the things you have to think about and that will determine where you're gonna shop. So Etsy will give you a lot more of some of the custom planners. They will also do a lot of the digital. So that pretty much the best place to find digital planning is on Etsy. If you want um, pretty with a lot of artistic 
um, variability, you're probably going to want Michaels. So that, that if you're doing the stickering, that kind of thing, Michaels, Joann's, Hobby Lobby, the craft store is going to be the place to go. If you want something pretty that's already done, so you're kind of, again, the peacemaker, the giver, you're not going to necessarily be doing the artistic expression, but you want it to be pretty, then you probably want to go to some place like Barnes and Nobles or a stationery store because they're already going to be pretty. They're not going to be the kind that you add stickers to. They're just going to be printed on pretty paper or the pretty covers and designed along that way. And then again, if you're the functional, you know, give it to me straight, <laughs> straight up no chaser, don't want a lot of fluff, you'll probably want to go to more of the office supply stores, uh, the staples. Those are going to have the more of the black and white, all about business, getting things done. And if you're more of that success oriented, very driven, then you might want to look for more of those branded. You're going to go online and look for some of the branded planners that um, will cost you a little bit more, but they'll may have the leather bound cover or the um, metal corners. They're going to look more executive, more rich um, looking, and they're going to have probably a little bit more inside their pages that is structured, but structured towards a goal, goal, goal oriented. So there's achievers out there. That's what they're going to like. So I hope that's giving you a lot to go on. So now you get to go out and shop. And in the last section, we're going to talk about how you can now stick with it. So you've got your planner. How are you going to stick with actually using it so you don't wind up with a planner graveyard and empty planners? So it's okay to change your mind and have half-used planners, but have a planner that you only used for a few days or not even at all. You bought it, didn't even crack the cover once you got it home. That's what we want to avoid. So we'll be talking about that in the last issue. So have a great day, and we'll talk to you one more time on this topic. Take care.